This is for us to sync up on work that's going on around BCARD, um, eliminate blockers and prioritize work for the next week. On the attendance side, well, I already took some attendance, but I think Drost joined us. Joined, joined it. <laughs> Drost joined us. So welcome, Drost. I'll add you to the attendance list there. On the lag metric side, this is what we're trying to achieve. This is our true goal. Um, the more transactions we have, the more revenue we have. The more revenue we have, the more we can share with communities. And that's going to allow us to empower communities as we are trying to do, uh, because communities are the uh, are the are uh, one of the the big ways for us to bridge that UX gap between Web3 and the real world. So transaction volume is how we're measuring what we're doing right now. And on the lead metric, oh, so you can see that we got uh, plus 60. Tom, I ended up not using that number you put down, but I think we'll use it from um, going forward. But um, there is a total transaction volume, and then there is a settlement amount, which is how much MasterCard actually settled, which is what we get paid for. Um, so I may look at this as acceptance rate or something like that, but either way, um, we, we can start using that dashboard when it goes to prod, which I hope we can do this week. On the lead metric side, we have zero new users. Uh, and I figure, what would you say our progress on the generic card is in terms of percentage? Um, in terms of having everything submitted, that is pretty much there. Um, so percentage-wise, uh, not much more we can do now except wait. I would say 95% of the way there. All right. Cool. Very close. Um, we have three returning users this week, so not a lot, um, but we only have... 11 on the app total, so let's not freak out about this. But yeah, something like 25% of returning users. Um, we're going to start looking at this a little bit better once we get Tom's dashboard out into production and zero new money in the multi-sig. On the team-wide side, same as we've been doing before. I haven't had a chance to do them, but we need to do the seasonal updates, and we're going to try to get payroll out. So um, submit in B-card governance for work that you've done. Um, typically, we um, are compensating people for either work product that they have shipped or final stuff that they've gotten out. Um, so stuff like Arcisti, you, you got out that balance sheet that provided value for the organization. We, we need to make sure that that's compensated. So I think I sent you a message the other day asking you um, how much uh, time you spent on that. And there's a discussion item about compensation a little bit further down that we're going to talk about. In terms of new members, I don't see anyone. So we'll just move straight into our milestones. Um, I also wonder if everyone uh if everyone in in europe might be uh a little bit off on the meeting time because um because it is in it is in daylight savings time here in north america and i think europe has another two weeks of this uh of not yeah. being switched which is really I, annoying uh, yeah i'm pretty sure i I would have to agree with that because looking at the crowd here, I think everybody is in North America except for my North America except for myself. So we're missing Rainus, Windverse, Andy. Um, also missing Brett, and uh, although he said that he might miss this meeting anyway. Yeah. Well, fair enough. I mean, I do think that it would be good to get people's feedback on uh, the compensation question, but we can always wait until next week to talk about that. It's not, as we say at Bank of Card, we're not in a rush. We're just trying to make progress every week. Either way, they will have the meeting recording, thanks to Corrupted Pineapple. I think Winverse is probably as well a victim of daylight savings. Um, but either way, we'll have this meeting recording, and we are, we are async first. Um, so it is not a requirement that anyone comes to this meeting. Um, the intent is that we get everyone all the information that they need um, by having this meeting. So it's good that we're taking recording. Um, on the milestone perspective, we have launched a POC to the public, um, beta testing. We're going to ship a new prod release hopefully this week. And I know, Tom, it's me who's kind of uh, slowed this down. I'm going to take another look at it. Uh, I'm hoping Thursday or Friday at the at the worst case, and we can try to ship a new prod release uh, pretty pretty soon, and then we can just load on some more beta testers. So we'll work on that. Uh, on the rewards flow side, uh, this was all updated based on internal feedback. Really great work from Tom and Brett on this one. Uh, so that rewards flow is looking pretty good. On the ad funds flow side, um, this is the next most important flow to improve. Actually, it's probably the most important, but uh, we had already started the rewards flow, so we finished that first. Um, I started at 
looking at how to make this better in the support site and the app. Um, right now, there's kind of like a three-step process. I'm going to maybe move it to a five-step process just to lead people through the process a little bit better. Anyways, I'm eating that still, and hopefully I will create a wireframe for other people to take a look at. Um, but the ad funds flow is our lowest uh, in terms of user ratings right now. So we need to improve that. On the analytics side, Tom created a dashboard for our transaction flow. Um, I said I don't have access yet, but it's actually really that it, it's not yet on production. So we will put it onto production at some point, and then we will be able to kind of see a little bit more about transactions from our end, which is great. And the support site, I spent most of Monday getting this up. Um, so check it out if you haven't already. Um, they do some things with the design that I'm not a fan of, but in general, I think it's shippable. Um, so take a look. Arcusti, thanks for taking a look and, uh, and highlighting a, um, a typo that I made. I haven't fixed it yet, but hopefully I will today. Um, on the content funnel side, I'm just going to skip over this because Rainus and Coffee Crusher are not here. Um, but uh, we are doing some work on it on the, com on the communication calls every week. Community funnel, how is this going, NFThinker? Um, we haven't updated the docs since being back from uh, from Denver, um, but I think that's something we could probably work on this week. Yeah, so maybe we can talk about it tomorrow at the ops meet. Um, I did talk to the Gloom community lead yesterday. Have you heard of Gloom Token? Gloom token? That is funny because it's something that I found in my wallet. Recently. Oh, did you get airdropped some Gloom token? Yeah, so if you're on Farcaster, you may or may not have gotten some Gloom. Um, and uh, yeah, just the, the, the dev is someone who works on nouns. Um, she seems very passionate about Gloom, and I kind of mentioned the card to her. It could be a good meme coin for us to um to to get going i did like briefly talk to dgen about uh using us for to distribute dgen and they said that that wasn't their vision for dgen but if we can show that it works for gloom then all of a sudden that really could change things so uh, i talked to them and they're really really interested about getting going i think now that we have uh this generic card available or hopefully it should be available soon um I'm hoping by the end of March, this generic card is available. We can really start to um, add a bunch of communities in. Like our our barrier to testing goes down quite a bit. Um, basically, it's just um, Tom or I adding some stuff into the app and releasing a new release, which will allow us to add communities. And in the future, it'll be even simpler than that. Uh, so it's something that we can start moving on on the community funnel side. How will we be um, reducing the, the generic card if we don't have the generic art? Yeah, so the generic art, I'm hoping, will be ready by the end of March. Maybe not, but, you know, that's my hope. Okay, and then the MDES would just come after. Yeah, the MDES would come after, yeah. So it's kind of like, okay, we're in beta. It's early. Um, eventually, we're going we're gonna to have Apple and Google, Play, Google Pay soon. Make sense? Yep, that makes sense. All right. Um, in terms of raising um, Seed Club, we didn't get in. Um, accelerators, we did, uh, we did excel or aters. We did, uh, or rather, NF Thinker did apply for a bunch of them. Um, which ones did you, did you apply for? Uh, RN DAO and Orange DAO. And uh, upcoming um, grants, I guess this R&D is really a grant, right? Uh, yeah, well, kind of, because they, they offer you like 100,000 plus in, in help as well. Mm -hmm. um, so 50,000 ARB tokens, and they say hundreds of thousands in support. Um, so, yeah, so in-kind kind of this hybrid. Um, so A16V is currently going... It's upcoming, um, so that's something that is going right now. And um, there is a Nouns X Farcaster. Um, yeah, so this is uh, upcoming as well. That we kind of briefly talked about, Tom, um, and I think, and I essentially they're saying like, hey, uh, we want a noun nounish uh, client for Farcaster, and three teams will get a hundred thousand bucks and three months each to kind of do something, and it is a grant. Right, so it's like a, um, 
it's a grant that uh, that uh, uh, could be useful for us to build out essentially what the long-term vision for B card looks like, which is for you to be able to kind of fully be engaged in a DAO in a single app. So that's kind of what Nouns is asking for right now. They're saying like, hey, we want a Nouns client for Farcaster. Nouns is a DAO. They have like, they're very decentralized. What does that look like? Um, well, we could get 100,000 bucks to, um, to figure out how that looks. So that's something to note. Um, next up, we have deployed our new brand. Um, the app is updated, thanks to Tom. Nice work on that, Tom. The support site is updated. That's something I worked on. Um, so we're moving forward on this. Let's look into our Asana board. Deploy the Nogs token. Oh, I put this uh, on, I put a bunch of things from the product weekly board into the all team board, just so people get a better understanding of what's going on from a product perspective. Trying not to put too many things in here, but just kind of the main things, uh, or at least things that other teams need to see. So deploy Nogs token. Um, this is something that uh, I wanted you to see NF Thinker. So we're at the point where um, we can start to deploy some Nogs token. Uh, we have a contract that's ready and we can start getting people onto this, uh, uh, getting people claiming some of these NOGS rewards. Um, but to do that, we need NOGS token. Uh, so I had wondered if you could talk to Dom for us uh, and start to get us going. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, he's still, uh, still engaging, so I'll be sure to ask him that. Okay, and uh, maybe you can even take him through a demo of the app after we get our release out this week. So he can kind of see, or we, I mean, we can just send him the app as well. Just say like, hey, check this out. But yeah. I, would, I would wait until the, the next release. Or Perfect. you could send him to our staging site if you like. Uh, right, yeah, well, let's just wait till the next release and then we'll, we'll get that going. I'll ask him about the nogs now. Okay, I'll put it into this week then. All right, um, write an article for the ad funds flow and write an article for PCI compliance. Which one of these were you interested in, Corrupted? We kind of spoke about it in DM yesterday, but I wasn't sure. Uh, I mean, being a beta tester, I can definitely talk about the fun ad funds flow, um, and I would need to do some research on PCI compliance, but I'm down for either one. Which one's more interesting to you? PCI compliance seems more interesting. All right. So I'll put that into this week. And I'll put this ad funds flow into next up. Actually, that's not a bad thing anyways, um, because um, on the ad funds flow, um, we're probably going to adjust the UI over the next week anyways. So Perfect. Then I can look at that flow when that's adjusted. All right. Role salaries, project champion, ops, work stream lead, definitely done. Um, and I think, did you spend at least five hours on Bankless car on B card in the last week? Yes, I did. Uh, and Tom, did you spend at least five hours on B card in the last week? Yes, I did. Awesome. I think like I want to have a discussion about compensation, um, but we're probably going to be moving away from this whole did you spend five hours and moving more towards um, hey, what is our claim on revenue? So we'll talk about that a little bit further down. Uh, I'm going to pop over these um, these. Muscles. So, you know what? We may as well just like quickly say what they are. We had publicly launched our POC. We're getting pretty close to this. The rewards flow is kind of the one thing that is blocking us. And then um, as well, just getting a couple more beta testers on this. So we're pretty close to getting this done. And then um, our community funnel, we kind of briefly talked about it before. Uh, we have set up our content funnel. This is something that Rainus is working on. We've deployed our new brand. Um, well, we've gotten a lot of things completed here, including the logos and names. So the app is now done. Um, GitHub, Disco, slogans, social handles, Farcaster, Twitter, Insta, Insta and TikTok. This is done. Profile pictures, this is done. Um, social handles, this is done. Um, so yeah, now we need to get our transactional emails. This is done. Our website domain is not yet done. Um, Gitbook is done. So we're slowly getting there. We're slowly getting there. Um, we're moving forward as we go. Um, yep. Yeah. So remove all bankless branding from the app. Well, all team projects is done. We'll look at it in the done section. We have raised 200K USD. We're working on this as we go. But again, it's not a 
massive, massive uh, thing for us to to do. It's not the most important thing we need to do. And then finally, when we publicly launch our um, when we publicly launch our POC, the next thing is we want to get a thousand daily transacting users, and so that's going to be uh, a non-trivial challenge, but one that I think is going to be the fun part. We're working on the external documentation website and on-chain goodies, but now we can get into things that we completed. So remove all bankless branding from the app. Thanks to Tom, this is done. So I'm going to mark it complete. Nice work, Tom. On the Seed Club Accelerator, uh, and a thinker, you did a great. Uh, we had a meeting with them and you did a great application, but unfortunately um, just didn't work out for us this time. Apparently it was extremely competitive and they were not necessarily convinced um, of the market uh, of the market need for this. So if we start getting a few communities on and we can get some positive, um, let's say referrals from those communities, um, it might be different in the future, but this is definitely, if we wanna get an accelerator, which is not something I necessarily think is um, a slam dunk for us, but if we want to get into an accelerator, uh, we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to need to do a little bit more work on traction. So that is kind of like getting these 1,000 daily transacting users. I'll mark this complete for now, um, and then we are going to head on over down into these blocked waiting needs feedback. Nouns pr prop house. Uh, we're going to wait until we are live for this. So we'll hold off on that. Uh, change our org email so you use a new domain. Basically, we're just doing some SaaS services, which is kind of a chore that I haven't gone into. The Panama yearly filing. Um, our Christie shipped the uh, our Christie shipped the balance sheet that we need for this. Um, so great work, our Christie. I sent it over to our lawyers in Panama. They're going to have a, lo a local lawyer take a look at it and sign off on it. It's going to cost us 350 bucks, but all in all, that's not bad for a. Uh, one year filing in Panama. Um, so we're gonna, we're, that's, uh, uh, let's just say, very, very cheap to, to, to do what we need to do and still have a foundation. Um, just as a comparison, for a Cayman Foundation, it costs about $25,000 a year to file. So that's the difference that we're looking at. Uh, we have a generic B card for new communities. We're not blocked on this uh, because TransCard is has this on their plate. So you can see here's the generic card design. Uh, and then once we get this out, we can close this off as well and start adding new communities. All right, write an article for PCI compliance. I'm gonna put it over here. Um, deploy Nogs token. Um, yeah, that's important, I would say. We can leave it here for now. Adjustments to add funds slow is probably the most important thing. So I'll put that at the top. Um, adding the user fees and onboarding, actually that is quite important as well. This has to do with compliance. The bank wants us to tell the users what all those user fees are before they sign up for the site. So I think that that's really important. Apply for Orange Dow Fellows. You did this already, right? Yeah, so I'm gonna put it into yes. waiting. Yeah, I just left it up there. Nice, looks great. Um, on the beta app side, yeah, so we are kind of, I mean, I would say that I stopped a little bit on this get 50 users in the app, um, but we are doing this gathering feedback and uh, updating UI UX based on that. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more? Of, oh, Blue Bear's not here. Blue Bear created a generic um, feedback form that we're going to add in the app, and this is going to allow us to gather feedback without having to do one-on-ones with people. Um, in general, when we're looking at feedback, I really like to look at it as as a kind of a spectrum between representative feedback and rich feedback. You get rich feedback from one-on-ones. You can really dive in deep with a single person. Uh, and really kind of learn how they feel, the ins and outs, the nitty gritty, how they feel about this kind of stuff. That is really rich feedback that you're getting. And that's the kind of feedback that we've been getting up until now. It's all been this really rich feedback that we're getting from people, which is very valuable, but it is not representative. And what that means is how one person feels is not necessarily how another person feels. So as we're moving up the scale, as your product matures, you kind of move from rich to representative. We did it very similarly for our um, product research. We had some one-on-ones with people. And then from there, we uh, launched a survey to you know a thousand DAO members who answered. And so we had rich feedback. We used that to kind of create a representative feedback. Um, and that representative feedback is, I guess, um, what is um, more credible for a larger group of people. And so we need to, we are starting with that rich feedback and we're slowly moving to this representative feedback. That's why we need other ways to gather feedback from people. Find a new on-ramp provider, um, NF Thinker and I have a meeting with Unlimit today. In fact, right after this meeting. Is that right, NF Thinker? That is correct. Nice, that will be helpful. Um, write an article on PCI compliance. Let's put in some success criteria. Um, get an article on the support site which covers 
what is PCI compliance? Why does it matter to our users? Um, how is eCard um, ensuring user uh, are protected PCI compliance? All right. Those are the success criteria. Does that make sense, Corrupted Pineapple? Completely. All right. Updated website, V3. Um, so we did have a uh, Zooty Bear DM me. Um, actually, I may as well just take her DM. She basically said that she should be able to work on U U uh, UX annotations um, in the next week. So I will just put in here. From at Zooty. Actually, her name in here is something else. It's like Sarah something or other. No, I forget. Zooty Bear. Where is Zooty? Stacy Wong. Okay. From at Stacy. Okay. So your message uh, should be able to work on UX. Will that work on the design and dev timeline? Yeah. So she's going to work on some of these UX annotations. And I'll just leave it here for now. Um, going down a little bit, update brand graphical assets to B-Card. Um, in general, I think that this is, well, the PFP, I, this stuff doesn't need to be changed. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Um, post hero images. I think that this is done too, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then the last thing is Twitter PFP, which I think is just our chippy. So can we, can we, I think this might be done. I'm going to ask Venus. At Rainus, is this done? There we go. Boom. Always nice to get something done off the list. Uh, frequently asked questions. Blue Bear was having trouble signing in to the support site. Corrupted, did you get into the support site? Uh, I did look at the support articles you created. I don't know if I, I don't believe I signed into it. Um, okay. Let me get so, to check. No. Blue Bear was having some issues with it, so I'm probably going to sit with him to try to to try to debug it. I want you guys both to have access to the support site um, because you're both writing articles for it, and we're currently using the free plan. I mean, we could use like a uh, we could use like a premium plan, but it's going to cost us like sixty bucks a month to get like three people on it. So um, right now we're just kind of using the one one person plan, and even if we upgraded that, it would end up being um, it would end up being, uh, uh, we would probably just pay $20 and still have one account. So <laughs> ultimately, um, I want you guys to be able to sign into that. So let me know if you have any issues. Uh, so when you say I, sign in, you mean signing into the uh, Git book behind it? Exactly. Uh, I do not have any credentials in the vault for it. OK. Maybe I'll screen share with you a little bit later to get you through that, um, because it may just be that I did something wrong. Sorry, I don't know if I, uh, I'll, we'll talk about it. Get access to the support site to upload. All right. Okay, yeah, so uh, we'll try to figure that out together. Our POC launch campaign is ready. Um, just ask at Coffee Crusher any updates on this. Um, I will send Naomi a little. Oh, she has a first draft. Oh my God. I'm excited. Cool. I'm excited about reading this first draft. At Naomi, I have not yet read it, but I am excited. Um, at Rainus, take a look if you like. Nice. That's really exciting for me. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read that a little bit later. Uh, so I'll put this in the to review section. Needs feedback. And moving down, video content. Um, they were having some issues here at Rainus. Update on this. Um, subscriber bi monthly newsletter. As far as I know, um, next email is in ideation phase. Um, potentially, use the new article Naomi wrote in it. We shall see. But uh, they're trying to get that going. And eventually, we're going to have to add 
March patron email update too. So I'm going to stick this in from the that list into here. Update cash flow for POC. Arcusti, I think this is next up on the list. Um, I'm <laughs> I'm guessing you didn't have a chance to work on it since you're working on the balance sheet. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, yeah. I only uh, updated that that uh, uh, if then statement. Uh, I've been kind of thinking about it, so we could probably it probably would line up with what's going to be discussed in the ops meeting tomorrow. Right. Sounds good. We can discuss it tomorrow. And transcendence, NF Thinker, how you doing on this? Uh, yeah, doing well. Um, Alan has sent some some updates, some little screen grabs. Um, so they're looking good. As discussed before, we won't be using live video with AR. They're just going to do an animation. So they've recreated a bit of Wall Street there. They've got the bull. Um, they have the noggle on the bull. They're going to flash red, noggles are gonna fall off and then the ball the bull is gonna like rear up and engage. Um so I guess we'll see what that looks like. Um I was more of a fan of like the noggle staying on, but we will see what they're coming up with and go from there. Um once that's done, they actually want to they they want to form a proposal for nouns to do some more animation work for them. Um, so they're excited to get this out, um, and then I said I would I would help them in that process of of getting something submitted. Uh, so yeah, that will that will be after that. Cool, sounds good. Thanks a lot on that, and I will comment on that. Anything else that we're working on that isn't here? Now that we're getting into March, I'm going to put the retro PGF and the set away, uh, get away to set the date range um, for Taxman on here. Um, because if we want to get some uh, retro PGF, I'll put these on the next up. Obviously, there's lots of work to do on the product side, um, but just so that we're thinking about that as we go. Um, but yeah, any other work that's that we're working on that's not here? Yeah, I'm starting to um, to sort of go over old contacts. I got back in touch with. Uh, with um, um, uh, what is the dude's name? It is um, uh, Commander. No, from hold on, I'm gonna find it right now in the notes. Um, with Commodore, not Commander, Commodore from Kraus House. Um, Reached out to him. I'm hoping to hear back from him. Krause House seems like a really good potential partner for us because they're a sports team and sports fans are fanatical. Um, so those are the types of people that we really want to partner with. Um, but it's just going to say that I'm trying to get in touch with the people that we have been in contact with before and it didn't quite work out for one reason or another. Um, and then I'm also... Um, starting to follow up with leads from Denver. The first one is um, a lady called Kaylin, and she runs a, it's essentially a marketing firm called Magnetic, and they are all about uh, community. They're about helping communities find their true fans and engage with their true fans. So hopefully there will be some crossover there. So, yeah, just typical partnership stuff, but um, more trying to increase our visibility yeah i'm also speaking with rain card next week um so Krauss house speak with commodore see if this could be interesting for them i put in the ops weekly inbox as well i'll put into this week rain card um this is kind of next with rain card see if they can help us with card issuing um so we shall see but uh, there are definitely other groups that have been working on uh, rain card and so far uh, uh, they've had positive uh, feedback on that so we shall see there um, yeah anything else that we're working on that's not here okay all right well let's go back into our notion and let's look at what we shipped last week so our Kutsi shipped the balance sheet for the Panama yearly reporting um, so that's awesome. Way to go, Art Christie. That was 
uh, uh, that was a really big thing that was on our plate, and I really appreciate your help on it. Uh, very professional, and it's much, much better than something I could do. So <laughs> I really appreciated that. I sent it over to Pacifica, and they're going to give us some. Um, they're going to give us some feedback on that. I set up a meet with Raincard next week, and I think I set up a meet with Unlimit today. Um, I shipped the support site, so take a look if you haven't seen it already. Um, I added Blue Bear and Core to the shared password manager. Um, appears they're having some issues with that, so I'm going to have to figure that out with them. Uh, Tom removed Banka's card from the app. Now it's just B card, and I removed it from the support site. Uh, Tom shipped updates to rewards, and I reviewed those. Um, there's a couple of small things we need to do, but the end-to-end -end flow should be working now. Blue Bear shipped a new tally form for feedback. I added auto mod to B card on Warpcast. Auto mod is just a way for us to moderate. We literally have like less than 40 followers, so it's not an issue. But um, it was free if I set it up um, right now. So that's what I did. I spoke with the Gloom Token community. They'd be they're very interested in B card, um, so that's interesting. And and I think I'll reach reach out to Kraus House uh, Kalen at Magnetic. Anything else that we shipped that's not here? All right, Rain, it's nice to see you, buddy. I'm glad that you're here because we're getting into a discussion. Well, there's a couple things we could talk about. ACH transfers, how we can make those better, a visualization ex exercise, what the world, uh, a world blockchain is integrated in real life. But I think one of the bigger things um, that we may want to talk about is team compensation. I think like in general, um, most people have been working, the, the compensation right now is bank and B card. Bank is a real token that we have in our treasury that we distribute to people. And B card is a, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, a future token that just exists in a spreadsheet right now. Um, the intent would be for B card to convey governance rights in our foundation. Um, I think that uh, that in general, uh, what we have been doing is saying like, okay, if you're getting compensated, you get you know a thousand B card and a thousand bank per hour, but you have the option to defer your bank for B card. Uh, so if you defer 100% of your bank, instead of getting any bank, you're going to be getting 2,000 B card per hour. So that's kind of how we've been doing it. Everyone's kind of been working for this future state. We're getting into a point now where we're starting to make some revenue. I know it's not a lot. It's like something like a quarter, you know, 30, 35 cents or something like that. So it's not a lot. But um, something came up recently in that we wanted to get a new website. And Israel Rex, um, he wanted... 1K uh, to, to do this website. He said 300 in stables and 700 in B card. Um, well, I mean, that's impossible because B card isn't a real token, first of all. So that's uh, what does 700 in B card even mean, right? Um, but uh, 300 in stables is something that, like, I was a little bit concerned about because um, if we start paying one contributor in stables, um, I'm worried that um, everyone's going to want stables and we just don't have the treasury for that. We don't really have that many stables. In fact, most of our um, uh, most of our stable coins or anything that we have for that kind of gets shipped over um, to our fiat entity to, to pay for our card issuing. So I wanted to talk about compensation, really just start gathering your thoughts and feelings on this more than anything. I don't think we're going to come to a solution in 30 minutes, right? So um, it's really just to get the ball rolling on this. I will say one thing I had been thinking of in the past um, for how we're going to be working on these kinds of things. Um, it's something that you may have heard me talk about in Banco Style, Pirate Math. In the past on Pirate Chips, um, they would do things, they would split the booty based upon certain shares. So the captain and the quartermaster might get two shares, um, or the quartermaster might get 1.5 shares. Most people would get one share, and the cabin boy would get like a quarter of a share or something like that. Um, so that's something we could do. We could split that into kind of like people who are working on this week after week and people who are working on this long term. Um, maybe that's something we could do similarly with revenue. You know, all of our revenue that comes in, 50% we give to the communities that we're working with. And we keep 20% for, uh, and then we keep 50% of it. So what we could do is of that 50% we keep, we could put 20% of it into our treasury and distribute 80% of it to our contributors. Um, that's something that we could do. The benefit of this pr approach is that um, there is a direct line to revenue for everyone um, who is working on this. So the more revenue that we make, the more everyone makes. And so there's kind of like a direct line to how much you get compensated based upon this revenue. The con is that maybe it's less inclusive. Maybe it will be harder for new people to get in because 
you know, why am I going to take a chance on someone we already are making, you know, uh, uh, revenue? Why would I add one person and reduce our revenue by that amount? Um, so that's something to note. But um, yeah, let's open it up. Any thoughts and feelings on on compensation? What if that revenue split that that revenue split that is distributed to contributors is distributed based on your B card uh, token amount? The so we could, if we did that, then B card would would be considered a security. So the, then we would have to pay taxes, right? No, you have to pay taxes regardless. More so, the SEC would say, like, hey, you are running an unregistered security. Oh, okay. You know what? That may not be true, because if you're on the team, that might not be true, because uh, it would only be true for people who buy Bcard on the open market. So there are ways that we could do that. Um, how much Bcard do you have? Especially if Bcard is, uh, like, if we made it, like, soulbound or something like that. That's another thing that we could do to ensure that it is not being known as a security. But yeah, we have to be if, careful. How I see this, if B card is not correlated to a financial value currently, it's just a point system within our organization. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's not a token, so that might be, you can't really sell it. As long as you can't sell it, then that's uh, that it's not a security all right okay so we have to be careful this don't want to be classified as security um could be based on how much p card you have p card not correlated to token value just a point system so maybe not a security um also not a security if you are working on it yourself and then contributions can be counted in b card tokens and and every month you just get your share of the revenue based on the B card tokens you added. So there's a personal interest of uh, contributing in a way that you get a bigger share of the revenue, which would correlate correlate to the jobs being done to increase revenue. So like, yeah. The one thing I would be worried about, and so I don't disagree with that. Um, the one thing I would be worried about is as well like. You know, I have a lot of B-card token, okay? Let's imagine something happens to me and I'm not able to continue working on, on B-card. Now we have this big gap in the cap table. Um, you know, like let's say I have 10% of B-card. 10% of revenue that goes to contributors is going to this person who's no longer working on the project. Um, we would probably want to create a mechanism that you have to continue working on the project to get that kind of revenue output. Yeah, interesting interesting angle yeah because like that's how it works in startups right like oh you did the work you you get paid but you typically they're not distributing revenue right um and uh i kind of have an issue with that with startups because people can vest for four years take off and if they were early then they they kind of get these things but is that early person really doing more work than someone who joined like a couple months later but didn't it didn't, wasn't as early. I don't know. Uh, I have some issues with that, but it could work. And I do think it's important to exper experiment. Maybe like the amount of people who, who actively work will anyway get more B card tokens than those who have not worked on the project for some time. Yeah. So, we could create a mechanism where people who aren't working um, on it get less or not none at all, in fact. Because um, this is, when we talk about this revenue, we're, we're specifically talking about contributors, but you know, our patrons may want to have, some, to have some, um, some claim on the revenue too. In fact, a couple um, had asked me about it. We can't do that easily because if we give them a claim on revenue, it's a security. They paid to get in. It's a work of others. It is some shared enterprise um, that there is a reasonable expectation of revenue return on. If we create that expectation of return, immediately it becomes a security and we're in trouble. Uh, so I think that uh, we'd have to be careful with that. But yes, I think that like in terms of our revenue, we could say things like, okay, 
we're giving this amount to contributors, we're giving this amount to users, you know, that could be something that we do too. say like, hey, we're going to give this to our users. Um, and we're giving this amount to the patrons DAO. We're not giving it to patrons, <laughs> but we're giving it to their DAO, to which they have control and they can do things with that. Um, so that's, a, that's another way that we could do it as well. Another approach, which would be totally classic traditional job approach, is we we only start paying people once we get investment in the stables to do so, and then we do usual payment for job system. Yep. So we can do that. Um, and like, so this Israel Rex thing is a is an example of that. You know, we do have like OP tokens that we could put towards this. If we really felt like Rexy is is you know worth more than other designers, um, we I mean I don't think the three hundred ask is is actually a lot at all. I don't think that that's terrible. Um, but there are lots of people who work professionally at the things that they do. For instance, you know Naomi writes professionally. Tom codes professionally, right? Um, they're effectively working for free right now, it just feels kind of unfair to give one person their professional wages and not another person. I don't know, how do you feel about this, Tom? Because, um, you know, you're one person who I who I named, and obviously, you know, you code professionally, and, and yet you're working with us uh, for Bcards. How do you feel about this? Yeah, I, I tend to agree that uh, it's, a, it's a luxury for uh, uh, myself to be able to work for free uh in the you know in the hopes that uh, we can build all together something of value uh to me <laughs> what i can contribute uh, is what i can contribute i feel that uh, i'd like to you know make it to uh, be as valuable as possible as a part of the the, the team um in terms of uh you know, getting money out of the project, I, it's a hope uh, for myself, of course, uh, in the long term, uh, I think as it is probably a hope for, for all. Um, how to make that fair and equitable is uh, is kind of beyond my, uh, my uh, understanding, uh, generally speaking, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm open to discussing it. Uh, I guess uh, you're right, as we accumulate a treasury, there should be a function for which contributors who have accumulated value and who need to draw down against that value they've accumulated, uh, there should be maybe a mechanism uh, that uh, contributors can put into place maybe to trigger a, uh, I don't know what it would be, like a emergency or like a one-time sort of a situation, but like we all come to face certain situations and it would be... Uh, It'd be hard to think that uh, we as B-Card having accumulated value from the labor of others can't give that value back if it's needed or in some way or shape or form, right? Um, for me, I'd like to say that uh, keeping the value where it is and helping it to uh, generate longevity in the project is, uh, to me, the, the principal goal. Yeah, I think for me, it's a goal too, really, is to, is to create revenue. Like, it's kind of like with these grants and stuff that we're getting, it's kind of like the difference between someone giving us a fish and us teaching ourselves how to fish, right? Like, if we can create these revenue streams, um, then we will be able to, uh, you know, make our own money in a way. And I think that that is more sustainable in the long run versus getting these grants. So when I look at those grants, I'm just like, I want to use these grants to allow us to make revenue, right? Like it's more that than anything else. And um, I think to ourselves, like what is going to get us revenue? Sometimes the design is going to do that. Sometimes some coding is going to do that. But the grants that we're getting are not going to be enough for the, for the team that we have working on this. And one of the things I really like about Bankless Card as well is that like it's kind of like you want to work on this? Yeah, work on it. Um, do your best and, and then we will... We'll, we'll figure it all out together. We have this kind of shared dream. Um, how can we convert that shared dream, in, dream into something that, is, um, something that is sustainable for all of us? That's what I'd really like to know as well. Yeah, I suppose it comes down to incentivizing the labor that we know is important, right? Like we know that uh, all the work that everybody's putting in is valuable to the, to the project long-term. And uh, it's difficult to say that if somebody says that they need, you know, monetary compensation for the value they're generating. It's not unfair. 
uh, but I but I suppose at that point uh, it's kind of like um, you know we have to pay our vendors, right? <laughs> we have to pay yeah. uh, the providers that are like providing us with the services that help us deliver what we need to deliver, and. <clears throat> At the end of the day, people are either going to be contributors as a part of the project, or 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 they may be vendors, uh, you know, providing something to the project for monetary value. But uh, maybe there there's a, some sort of distinction there. Yeah, like for instance, I think like Rexy was like, okay, you know, I'll take less stables if I could if I could have more B card, and it's kind of like, well, as soon as we start paying people. Um, like, I'm not giving TransCard any B card, for instance. I'm not giving <laughs> Privy any B card, right? And it's because we're paying for the services, right? And so if they did this at a discount, would I give them B card? Yeah, I guess I would. Um, but, like, how much B card is, is another thing. Like, I guess, like, you know, most of the, I would say most of the workstream leads are probably doing more than five hours a week. And, um, you know, they're getting, for that, they're getting like five to ten thousand B card, right? And so we really need to be careful with that. Set up the mechanism so people don't feel slighted either. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Having a negotiation that opens uh, with one opens a negotiation like for all, right? And we we all kind of feel unfairly <laughs> slighted, and unless you know, even you just are entered into the negotiation some way, right? And I don't know if anybody wants that. Yeah, just a kind of fragile time for us. I mean, Rainus, you're the one who are... Oh, sorry, and I think I saw you You unmuted. What's up? Yeah, I was just about to add in there. I mean, that's a really prescient topic right now, especially as we're going into this meeting with Unlimit after this meeting. Um, and, you know, the original conversation with them was, uh, okay, we're passionate about this and we want to help contribute, but if they're going to contribute, they're also going to be a vendor. They're going to be providing an on-off ramp service to our corporate structure and to our clients. And is there, will they be interested in earning B card token? How are we going to compensate them? Or are they just in it for the long term? Hey, let's see if this can work and, and we'll get some fees from, from the customer. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's something we're going to be, talking about again later today as well. So I thought I should mention that. And what about you, uh, Rainus? Uh, I know that you're, you're really pushing, I think, for, for Rexy to, to work on this um, because he is a great designer. It's absolutely true. But yeah, how are you feeling? Uh, regarding uh, Israel Rex, it's like it's it's the group decision. Um, as far as I know, design could be done by anyone. We just need one person uh, that could uh, drive in. And in the in that last con conversation, Israel Rex was was named as as appropriate. So that's why we engaged the conversation with him. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think he would do a great job. Uh, but uh, but if talking about paying contributors, I do I do understand uh, if we start paying one, everybody will start asking, and that's what happened in the DAO. Once we started paying bank tokens, it turned into a treasury drain over the course of two years, and. Uh, I would like to avoid that situation in this organization, uh, you know, to learn from collective mistakes. Um, but uh, in my in my personal view, I'm 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 in it for for the long run as well. Uh, been here for for some time now, and and uh, I've learned a lot, and that is the most valuable thing to me. Um, of course, if I could put in my full time and be paid, uh, that would be a dream come true. And I could spend every day five hours, not just one week, five hours uh, on this project. Uh, I think that that is a dream for us all as well. Uh, but how we set it up, we, we got to be careful because we're currently talking about money that we don't have. 
and um, and it's a tricky situation because I've been in many projects where uh, where everybody's working for the long term, and uh, when the long term arrives, suddenly, well, those are centralized systems, so the the leader of the project has secured himself a nice revenue stream, monthly income, and suddenly all of the other members are not relevant anymore for him. Uh, so I've been in those situations as well. So it's, uh, yeah, all I can say is a careful situation and I don't, um, I, I, I don't know the correct path. Um, but what I do know is that People will, at one point, want to get paid for their work. Um, spe specifically, uh, also people who are doing continuous work. Because, uh, uh, like, I mean, um, when, when recently I talked to Andy, he's been doing videos, uh, but he can't do videos full time because it's a lot in the production, script writing and filming because he has to go uh, photograph kids on his day job. And he, he wants to do the big card videos, but he just, once he comes back from uh, uh, 10 hours of photographing little kids, there's no energy left for him to, to, to be happy in front of a camera and talk about crypto cards and stuff. So yeah. it's interesting, definitely. Uh, I don't know. It's yeah. I don't know the the, the right way forward. Uh, all I can express is my views and findings. Yeah, I think it's good that you're expressing those things because I mean it's the same thing that's happened to me in the past too. And I think one of the things I really loved about Bankless DAO and B Card is this idea that anyone can come here, anyone can contribute. And you know we're not making a lot of money right now. We don't have a lot of resources, but we can um share what we have if you're producing something of value i think that's the key is that if you're producing something of value and uh and uh, uh and you are here to try to help us move towards that mission then yeah let's let's pool our resources together because together we can have a bigger impact um what i would hate to get into and it's really why i kind of i've really shied away from this idea of a core team and a non-core team and this kind of thing um, it really just ends up being like people who who kind of uh, have some sort of responsibility, reporting a metric, have some sort of uh, thing. Those are the people who who I'm calling the work stream leads. Um, but I don't want to say that there's like an in group and an out group. It's different levels of responsibility that I think um, I've been trying to to do with those kinds of things. And so the intent being that you know as we're getting more revenue then those kinds of, if you take on more responsibility, if you are creating more value, um, then you are gonna get high, uh, compensated for that in, in a higher way. That's what I would like to keep going um, as, as we move forward. Um, but as you said, it's not uh, an easy thing for us to figure out. Any other thoughts on compensation? I don't know, there's, I haven't heard from Arcusti, Corrupted, or Drost. Um, mainly just listening. Um, you know, I'm here for the long term and, you know, my intention with Banco Style is kind of the same thing. But, um, as far as um, being a contributor to the project, um, you know, financially, at some point I'd like to see that recouped. <laughs> um, but in terms of being paid for my work right now, really all I've done is a little bit of soft promotion and, you know, record a couple of interviews and stuff. Um, and until I start writing documentation and really doing more work, I don't know that I even really want to be paid. I'd, I'd really rather have it be built up as reputation points or something or some percentage of the, you know, how we're keeping track of over time, how people have stuck with the project and various forms of contribution, however we measure that. And then, you know, if and when we do become profitable or, you know, something happens, I, whatever those, those possibilities are, um, that we 
that it reflects back on the people that have been here since the early days and have, you know, as opposed to somebody that comes in later and then ends up getting all the rewards, which I, I don't think any of us want to see. But, you know, if, if somebody comes in with a huge investment, obviously, you know, that <laughs> that's that's significant and would would affect those dynamics. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't really have a whole lot to say beyond that. I've not been, as you guys know, not been very present to be able to do more than I've done so far. And that will be changing and is changing. Um, and so, yeah, my, my tone may change, but for right now, I'm just happy to be here. And like Raina said, learning um, some of the, some of the um, inner workings of, of how the finance system actually works. My degree is actually in finance, not, not banking, but, uh, but in portfolio management, that kind of stuff. I never went into it because I didn't want to. I thought it was tedious and boring, but, um, and it was really a hustle kind of thing. Um, it was uh, what they wanted me to do when I first got out of college. So, you know, looping back and, and getting back into finance, understanding how those, those mechanisms work, and then kind of from the process side, what their priorities are, and then we're trying to implement these new mechanisms and incorporate. Yeah, I mean, it just the learning to me is, is part of the compensation, and the IRS isn't going to get their fingers in my brain getting expanded. Yeah, they can't take your learnings. <laughs> we are coming up on the end of our time, but Arcusti or Corrupted, if you have anything to say, um, you know, feel free. This is something that we're going to be talking about over time, so you know, don't feel like you got to get your stuff in now. But uh, certainly, if you have anything to say, it's it's appreciated. All right. Well, I will just say uh, thank you to everyone who is here. I know the timing is a little off this week. That does happen with a worldwide, uh, with a worldwide um, team like ours. Um, but I do think that it's great to me that we can have these conversations. These are tough conversations about things like compensation um, together, and really understand um, that we're here for a certain reason and. Um, while I think money will will help us with that, you know, we we all really believe that um, that this could lead to um, being able to support ourselves full time. I also believe that um, if we were able to do this and we didn't need money, I would still continue doing it too because empowering those communities, bridging that gap, is more important to me um, than than the money. Although you know, I need money to live. Uh, so like just being able to have these kinds of tough conversations with each other and feeling like, you know, there's not judgment going around. We're all coming from the same place. We're all trying to come to a beneficial outcome for everyone. Um, that's really touching to me. Uh, so I just want to thank everyone for um, saying their piece and for trusting each other. Uh, I think that ultimately money can uh, do a lot of good things and it can do a lot of bad things. And so I really want to make sure that we keep what it is that makes us a team. We keep what it is that brings us together as we grow, because I do think we are going to grow. We got our first 31 cents of revenue and that's only with 10 people, right? And only three people using the app, right? That's not a lot. There's a lot that we can improve, but because there's a lot we can improve, that means that there's a lot higher we can go. So thanks everyone for being here. Thanks for being you and thank you for being part of the team. Um, all the best to everyone. I'll just see you later. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye, everyone.